Ready live, Facebook live. This is Tom from the Ice Craft app. Today is Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. We hope many of you are preparing for this Friday, April 13th. Make sure you don't walk through any ladders, have any black hats in front of you. Just carry a little salt with you just in case you gotta throw it over the old shoulder there. We hope that everyone's been doing well. We've had lots of questions, been reading lots of articles, talking to lots of people. So the theme of today is lots. There's lots going on. So um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us while we're doing our live feed if you are seeing this after the fact or you're maybe watching this on YouTube or one of the other channels that we're gonna kind of broadcast it on please don't hesitate to comment below and we'll get questions or answers to you pretty fast uh, oh, hold on sorry guys sorry Sometimes I think I shut my phone off and I don't. So um, we're going to answer lots of questions. There's been crazy amounts of things going on the last few days um, over the last week, really. So we're, we're just going to go into it, whether we're talking about tariffs, Chinese restrictions, prices up, uh, prices up, prices down, gold up, oil up, how that's going to affect the overall market. Um, there's just there's so many different things going on. It's going to be really, really Let's go with fun to figure out where a lot of this is going. So let's start with a couple of outside factors that um, are leading to the metal prices going up, down, sideways. Let's just kind of go from there. Um, hold on. So one thing that we want to talk about is the oil prices. Oil has continued to thrive and, and climb. And one fact that I printed out the other day, which is kind of crazy, ready for this? I don't know if you can see this. The number one, I'm just gonna read it for you real quick. The US has already surpassed Saudi Arabia this year in oil production. Now an Austin, Texas based firm called Drilling Info foresees that the U.S. will likely top Russia by the end of 2018 to become the world's number one oil producer. You want to talk about a crazy number. That is a crazy number. That number shows that the market for oil in the U.S. has grown so much from the boom of the shale industry that the United States is now exporting oil instead of just importing it from the Middle East like we traditionally have over the last 40 or 50 years. Now a lot of people will ask, how does that affect my scrap prices? Because that's why we're all here. I'm not a, a gas expert, I'm not an oil expert. You know, uh, hell, I'm, sometimes I'm not a scrap expert just uh, you know when these markets jump, but I try to put everything together to give you a better idea. With the, the US producing more oil, that means that less things are going to be exported and we're going to be able to keep a lot more metal domestic, okay? So when I say the U.S., I'm really talking more um, of Canada and the U.S. because they kind of are integrated in a lot of these trading and exporting and importing of items. So with the U.S. keeping more oil and producing more oil and potentially keeping more scrap, what's going to happen is we've already started to see a lot of mills, furnaces, and smelting operations re-up some of their operations compared to the last 10 to 15 years when a lot of them have shut down multiple parts of their plants because the production hasn't been there. We've been relying on more metals coming from overseas, from the Chinese market, from the Indian markets. And with a lot of these tariffs and restrictions going into place, we're going to start to see a lot more metal stay domestic. And with a lot of the domestic U.S. companies being more proactive and immediately opening up parts of their operations that they've shut down in the past, we should see a lot of these prices continue to stay very strong, very aggressive, and we're going to see a lower cost of transportation items, but we're going to see less material coming into the U.S. potentially. By having less material come in and kind of recycling inside of our own four walls, that should keep these prices at a very high level. And what we'd love to see happen in the future is just like we talked about the U.S. exporting oil, We'd love to see the U.S. starting to export finished steel, 
copper, aluminum, and other metals to the world instead of importing a lot of it. Now you'll ask, why is that gonna be so important? That's gonna make us more reliable and sustainable in-house, inside our own four walls. I'll give you just a, a little example. Aruba is in the middle of the ocean, right? And they're this little island and they have, they're basically, they're a desert, a deserted island and they wanted to make this into a, a vacation resort haven for so many people. 95% of their uh, revenue comes from tourism. And if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm close, okay? So how do you make a deserted island become a thriving paradise for tourists? Well, you need to produce a lot of things in house. So one thing that they did was they created this salt purification plant where they, or excuse me, water purification plant, where they were able to desalinize the water coming out of the ocean, turn it into potable water so we could drink it, use it for flushing toilets, etc. And they created their own little in-house network so they could have more people coming to them and they don't have to go out and you know import water and make things too expensive for tourists. It, uh, and that's how they've kind of kept themselves going. That's not the perfect analogy, but it's the closest one that I can think of to show you how the US is trying to take their metals, their oil, their gas, and keep it in-house to create a stronger, better economic environment for the United States. You know, um, you've heard politicians saying the US first, the US first. This is what a lot of the things that are, are happening are trying to kind of institute. And we've seen that with a lot of these different prices. Uh, steel prices have continued to go up in 2018 through the first three and a half months. Well, we saw a small decline over the last week with markets down maybe $3 per ton on average, really relatively minor. We've seen such a nice uptick this year that we're very optimistic that this will continue the trend that it's on and push forward you know, the next three or four months. Next item is copper. Over the last week, we've seen copper do a real roller coaster, kind of following a lot of these stock market things where the stock market's been having these crazy jumps, up 500 points in the morning, down 100 points in the afternoon, erasing that 500 point gain. And you know, this morning opened up negative 250, now it's around negative 75. Gold prices have hit a two-year high, uh, hitting over $1,360 an ounce. So we've seen a lot of these weird things happening. A lot of people are asking, how are we gonna know where the markets are gonna be? And the answer is, we don't. I mean, this is really a roller coaster where the markets are trying to figure themselves out. A lot of these things are really having a domino effect where one thing is happening, and instead of just having it knock down one thing, it's knocking down two things, and we're trying to figure out where it's gonna settle, where it's gonna stop, where it's gonna become firm, and that's still a big part of the question that we're trying to learn. So the scrap prices all boil into it, where we've seen the Chinese say that they're going to make it a little more free, a little easier to trade and export some of their items, which caused the stock market to have a massive rally on Monday. Yesterday, the, the market rallied a little bit and we've seen copper prices rebound about eight cents a pound over the last week. You know, we saw bear right prices reported today for 277, 252, 237 throughout the US. These are really strong prices. And one of the cool things that we're doing at iScrap, we're putting a new page together that's gonna to show you more of the prices throughout the United States and Canada, more of the steel prices, more of the copper prices, more news stories, more things that are real life, not just, oh, I'm reading about the trading of copper. We wanna show you prices that people are getting at scrap yards. That's gonna help you learn, you grow, and you go from there. Um, another article that we talked about um, uh, that I read this week was about aluminum. So here's, here's the headline, ready? This is by uh, Bob Tita, I believe, in the New York Times. Despite new tariffs, aluminum is actually cheaper. So you say, well, well how the hell is that happening? How is aluminum becoming cheaper? You know, of course, as a scrapper, we want the aluminum prices to grow. But what we've seen is what I mentioned five minutes ago. A lot of these smelting operations, a lot of these new plants, they're bringing more material in, they're keeping it more in-house, so you get rid of a lot of those tariff, potential tariff fees that you'd have from importing material from overseas. You're keeping things domestic. Now you take that gas and oil uh, surplus that the U.S. is starting to produce, you throw that into the mix. Also, you're seeing all types of positive things happening. The market is really going to be on a, a bit of a very, very positive swing, especially the next few months. Now, there are going to be things that could happen, this potential crisis in Syria, 
stock market could take a two or three day tumble and they could easily lose 1500 to 2000 points you know there's going to be things that are going to happen this is not a perfect answer but what we are seeing is because of the shakeups that have happened over the last month to two months both politically uh, economically and then in the worldwide markets we've seen the overall scrap industry still remaining strong gold grow gold price is growing because we've seen people investing in it as a safe haven compared to some of the stock markets um, while palladium and pl uh, platinum prices have decreased we have started to see a small rebound over the last couple of days so hopefully that will continue to grow. Of course, that affects your catalytic converter prices. Not something that you're gonna come across too often as a everyday scrapper, but you still might find one here or there, or if you're scrapping cars, make sure to cut those cats off ahead of time. Sure, uh, you, question. You mentioned gold uh, prices. We Maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on how e-scrap prices have been going. We had a couple scrappers last week about ask about how they are so the e-scrap prices um have still remained relatively stagnant and that is largely due to the exporting market that was largely going to china we're waiting to see how that stuff kind of pans out but we've seen a couple of european and american market um, consumers start to be a little more aggressive because they know that there's more material out there available right now but the problem is there's a lot of low grade and high grade I'll give you an example low grade older computer towers big bulky towers right a lot of work a lot of process a lot of little screws bolts nuts taking things apart high grade maybe your gold ram you know gold ram is relatively easy has a high content of gold some of it can be reusable it doesn't store any information on it so a lot of the newer things can take be taken and then reused that helps people out but you're kind of in a wait and see mode to see what's going to happen from there gold right now isn't something that i would um, you know the electronic industry is a, a super dicey industry right now a lot of people say that they know what they're doing really really difficult to figure out so we're gonna have to pay attention to that closely over the next few months Hi Scrappers, this is Tom from the Ice Scrap app. Today is Wednesday, April 11, 2018. We try to do these reports every Wednesday afternoon around 1 p.m. Eastern. Huh? Facebook group. Oh yeah, we uh, we recently started our Facebook group a few weeks ago that we'll have a link to um, underneath this video. So if you ever want to ask a couple more questions about scrap, you know, consider it the new age forum. You know, it's just easier to talk to people, easier to, to learn what people are doing to make more money with their scrap. We've had um, hundreds of users join the first few weeks that we've had it up and running. So hopefully that will continue to grow. We continue to post prices. We continue to, to see prices getting posted. Stay tuned for our new page coming out in the next month or so, which is going to give you, the scrapper, a better opportunity to make more money and learn how the prices are going, trends up, down, sideways. So when we have that come out, please make sure you give us you know, your feedback. That is how we take your information, regurgitate it into a big, better, and more improved site to help the, the scrap industry continue to move forward. Guys, again, this is Tom from the iScrap app. Today is Wednesday, April 11, 2018. Please tune in every Wednesday around 1 p.m. Eastern time. We try to do our weekly report. Until next week, scrappers, I'll scrap you later.